Hi, everyone. Welcome to We Talk News. This is a very special edition of We Talk News because we're interrupting our regularly scheduled and produced newscast with an exclusive interview from north of the border in Canada. Now, everybody knows that Canada was the first G7 nation to legalize cannabis, but it hasn't been smooth sailing in that country, let's just say. Then again, it hasn't been smooth sailing in any part of any country, in any part of the world, because we're all learning by doing. This is all new to so many people, and Pro Cannabis Media is very happy to be able to bring two people from Canada who have figured out a way to market a dispensary without actually having any kind of a call to action. And it's, an, it's a very interesting um, strategy. And uh, it's Brent Choi, right, Brent? I get it right. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, you got it. He is the he is the CEO and co-founder of Angry Butterfly Agency in the Toronto area. And also with us is Lisa. And I didn't even ask you how to pronounce your last name, but I'm going to guess it's Bignoni. Bignoni. It is a hard G. Oh, so it's okay. Bignoni. Gotcha. No, no, no. And just Bignoni. I got it. Soft G. I'm, I'm a I'm a picky guy when it comes to pronunciation, you know, because I teach okay. kids, too. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Brett, my first question is Angry Butterfly. Now, did you know that there was a rock band called Iron Butterfly at one point in the 70s and 60s? Didn't they sing uh, Inagata De Vida? Inagata De Vida, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that's not how you came up with this, right? No, no, no. Butterfly has uh, many great connotations um, in our world. Of course, it's the creature that goes to the biggest transformation from a slow, ugly caterpillar to a beautiful taking flight butterfly. So we love okay. that. Mm -hmm. Also the butterfly effect as this show is indication of with this campaign is much of what advertising is. And angry is our, our passion and dissatisfaction of uh, how things are going in advertising and marketing. And we want to, you know, transform not only the work you know, our clients we do, but how the industry thinks about um, advertising. Which so that's a little crazy. snippet. Actually, yeah. the industry loves advertising. They just aren't allowed to because of all the regulations, both at the uh, federal and state level. Um, and I'll ask you before I get to Lisa, uh, one of the few things that the industry is allowed to use are billboards on the highway. Now, Brent, I've been in media for a long freaking time. We used to look down at the billboards. It's a, it's a second and a half impression. Uh, how do you view billboards as opposed to any other type of uh, targeted SEO uh, type driven uh, advertising and messaging. I think every medium has a role. Um, if billboards are being used to tell a deeper story or using it the wrong way, it should be something just really simple and quick, really about the brand tone or something really simple. Maybe there's a big sale you want to promote. Um, and then if you're thinking of like, more transit and bus and those things, you can have a bit more information and tell a bit longer story because you're standing in front of it, you're waiting for a, a bus or subway. So I think each one has its own role. So if you use it correctly, I think the billboards can be very effective. You want to launch a new car, show the beautiful shot of a car and say the new Ford Bronco is here. That's all you need to say and people will get interested in it. So it has a role. I will say they could use your creative brain on some of the billboards that I've seen up and down the Massachusetts Turnpike. Let's just leave, leave it at that without naming any names. Um, sure. Lisa, you are the co-founder of Stoked, which, by the way, is a really cool name. I, I like that name. Thank and you. first of all, tell us how you came about being a uh, dispensary owner or licensee in Canada. Uh, sure. I don't know what the process has looked like in Massachusetts, but in Canada and in our province of Ontario in particular, um, when cannabis was legalized, it was left to the provinces to implement. And in Ontario, um, the premier at the time um, hosted a lottery for the first 25 individuals who were able to apply for a license. And I was lucky enough to win one of those opportunities. And so uh, I opened the first a legal cannabis store in Niagara Falls, Ontario. And I ended up selling that. And my husband and I launched Stoked with the Stoked with the proceeds of that sale. All right. Well, congrats on that. And the advertising regulations in Canada are pretty much as strict as most of the states. They will not allow you to go on to um, traditional 
uh, major media like television and radio, um, no calls to action for any mar uh, marketing materials. Am I, am I correct so far? Um, and also don't make it appealing to children, which is something we can chit about, talk, uh, talk about another time. Um, uh, did I miss anything for the most part? No, I, I think that's basically it. And I think the appeal to children is at the forefront. That's the main um, the main driver for the regulations in the first place. Yeah, um, I have a whole diatribe about this. We need to educate the children, but we have to educate the parents first. OK, it's really important because if you're going to educate your children and by the way, we all know, at least I know, parenting is the toughest job. And I think Erin found that out again because you never are in control of your life. If your child needs to go somewhere or has an emergency, you're there, you drop everything. That umbilical cord is a forever unconditional love. It is the toughest job. However, a lot of parents are still living with that misinformation that's been around for about 80 years. And if you look at the science and the research, and if you know anyone who has actually used this substance for a long period of time, get them to tell you how they use it and how it might help a ailment or something that they've been dealing with, whether it's anxiety. There's a reason why there's more medical uh, states, medicinal marijuana states in the United States than I don't even like to use the R word, the recreational word, the adult use world. That's that's really one of the things that I, I, I harp on all the time because they recognize that there is medicinal value to it, even though that Controlled Substances Act in the United States puts uh, cannabis right alongside some of the worst drugs because it would, that law was, was written in 1970, 71, 72, under the only United States president in my lifetime that actually resigned from office. But we, we can also get into politics, but I, I don't think that's this is the time for that. All right. Um, so, uh, Brent, without any further ado, you told me I can play your video uh, that kind of explains the whole campaign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pause in our interview. We're going to roll the video and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. In Cannabis sales are legal in Canada, but cannabis advertising is not. So we zigzagged the lock by advertising neighboring businesses with covert callouts to a chain of stoked stores and their products. Introducing Next to Stoked, a legal-ish adult targeted undercover campaign on the buzzkill media channels that prohibit cannabis product ads. First, we skirted Google's strict filters with high quality pre-rolls to promote a neighboring business and stoked. I got paid, I got that Looking for the dopest nails in town? Whether you're feeling a hint of something blazing or more of a chill vibe, we'd be happy to hook you up. Visit us at 2410 Kingston Road, right beside Stoked Canada. Ready for your mind to go places you've never been? Is an altered state of mind the present? Or is it the future? Find high quality inspiration here and Cliffside Village Books, next door to Stoke Cannabis. Can a business like yours use a commercial wiring upgrade? Let's get you lit. Roll by Stoke Cannabis and see my work up close and fast. Our covert out-of-home ads were approved by national media companies. And we hacked Meta and TikTok's notoriously strict anti-cannabis ad filters. Then the conversation got rolling. Did anyone else notice the pot shop on there? Is this really an ad for a bookstore? We duped national out-of-home companies, radio stations, and global social platforms, proving that when the law sucks, you find a big, bad loophole. Here's my biggest question, and Brent or Lisa, I really am interested to hear how you got your neighborhood, uh, your neighbors in business to basically get a, a freebie for, for advertising for them, but also that they're not telling people not to stay away. They want them to come down and check out Stoked and check out their own uh, business, whether it be nail salon, electrical, or, or anything else on that strip mall. How how did you go about um, pitching your, your neighbors and explain to them what, what you're looking to do? Or was it all Brent's idea? 
<laughs> uh, well, I mean, when you're in plazas uh, similar to the ones that Stoked has stores in, you end up becoming friendly with your neighbors. You know, you're running over looking for change uh, for your for your cash register. You're offering coffee as you're heading to the, the coffee shop. So we know the folks in our plaza. Um, and as Brent and I chatted about this really innovative and interesting idea, um, you know, it was just a conversation with our neighbors to see, you know, first of all, they had to be pro cannabis. Um, some of them may not have been interested, but at the end of the day, it was, uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity for everyone. Yeah. Uh, Brent, how did, um, uh, how did you guys go about getting around some of the, um, the blocks that the various social media um, platforms have out there for anything with the word cannabis or anything, any uh, other word that is related to that plant. You know, we really didn't know what was going to pass through or what wasn't. So we had like a plan A, B, C ready to go. We shot the videos, for example, with a bunch of different ways to say things, certain things in the background, certain things we took out. So we have a lot of different editing options that we uh, were ready for in case uh, it got rejected or the videos got rejected. Uh, same for the print, uh, the out of home, the transit shelters, we we put our best foot forward thinking that there's a potential it could get rejected. So our we used our best judgment thinking, okay, if we said this, maybe the filters will pick it up. So let's do a version without the word cannabis, with the word cannabis. Some of the phrasing that we used out of the sort of the wordplay we had softer versions, we had stronger versions. Um, so we overall, you know, came into it with our eyes wide open and said, let's have options ready in case something gets rejected, but we didn't know what it would be. So we just, right up until we submitted and waited for the response saying it was approved, we didn't know. Um, even the out of home stuff we sent through, we uploaded the files and we're just sort of waiting for an email back saying, hey, we know what you're doing here, that's not allowed. So we were just sort of on pins and needles waiting and nothing happened. Everything went live and it was all approved. So at the end of the day, also, we feel um, we're actually not breaking any rules. We're promoting a bookstore or a nail salon and their location happens to be beside the, yeah, there's wordplay and dual language that, you know, we all know, um, but it's officially on paper legal. So um, it should have been approved and we're lucky that we are. It was. How long has this campaign been going on social media? About a month now, um, maybe just under a month. So and we didn't actually communicate any of this out to the press until after the media would pretty much run its course because we didn't want to promote it. And then let's just say Meta heard your podcast and said like, hey, let's investigate it and shut it down. So we waited till the media had run its course and then reached out. Now, to me, I'm all about normalization and acceptance of this plant, not necessarily legalization. I'm big on decriminalizing it and eventually legalize it. But the problem with legalization, guys, is it involves politicians and lawyers, two of my least favorite people and in, in uh, occupations out there. I mean, I just don't trust any of them. Sorry. It's just how I feel. That's a personal opinion, not a reflection on my company. Uh, then, Lisa, I got to ask you, of course, how effective has this campaign been? Have you seen any kind of an ROI? Yeah, well, we're honestly still collecting the data, um, but we've certainly seen an increase in uh, links over to our website and clicks on our website. Uh, we're still counting the new customers that are coming into our store, and we, we're measuring that through new signups to our loyalty program. Um, so, it's you know, we don't have the final numbers yet, but it's looking really positive. Now, I'm guessing, Brent, this is a question back to you, that the People that you got, the electrician, the nail salon, and there's one more that I'm that's skipping my mind right now. Did they bookstore. the bookstore? Oh, the bookstore, of course. Um, who paid? <laughs> I mean, did they get free uh, ads basically? They did. Stokes Stokes is uh the uh, client on this, and so they're the one uh, supporting the uh, campaign. There you go. And they yeah. must have been happy that oh, I'm guessing that helped. Uh, get them to agree to do it, uh, especially when they found out, oh, we're going to have a professionally video campaign. We're going to have a uh, SEO campaign. Oh, this is going to be great. Um, did you have, how much selling did you have to do? Either one of you, Lisa or Brent on this. Lisa, you said you were friends with your neighbors. That obviously helps. Yeah, certainly. And you know what? Our neighbors are fellow small business owners. And so 
you know, they don't, you know, a nail salon and a, and a uh, used bookstore. So there's not a lot of additional capital to work with an organization like Angry Butterfly to put an ad campaign together. So it kind of was a win-win, um, you know, initial conversations with them explaining how the program was going to work were really positive. And so any kind of opportunity for them to get some advertising, they were they were all really interested in. They were stoked. They were stoked. <laughs> I think that's great. And, and best of luck in the future. Brent, I give you a lot of credit. I look for stories like this that, to me, reek of normalization. There used to be a, a well, there still is a, a seafood company in Boston called Legal's Seafood. Um, the original family has since uh, moved on, let's just say, because the pandemic screwed every restaurant chain up in America. Um, and they did a series of ads when Massachusetts first went legal and talked about how their fish were um, uh, getting high on omega-3s. And they used uh, double entendres and it was a New York agency. And we had at the time the, the founder and the owner of that, uh, that group, Legal Seafoods, in our studio and we talked and it was, I thought it was one of the most clever creative campaigns and more importantly it's like the world needs to get used to the fact that cannabis is here now it's being used as a plant medicine it is saving lives and by the way it's saving children's lives it's it, it changes the parenting because they at some point are going to get so frustrated with western medicine that's not curing their child they're looking for alternatives it may be their last alternative but this is the mentality that i'm seeing and finding out you know after um being on the beat here for about five years um brent i congratulate you and angry butterfly i i think it was it's a great campaign i'm excited that you were willing to come on and, and talk about it because this was the first time i saw it and uh, I wish you the best of luck in the future. Any more coming along the way, Brent? Uh, well, we'll see. There's always opportunities to think about new ways to you know, promote Stoked and um, you know, maybe there are other businesses. I think the idea has legs. It's just whether we uh, find the right opportunity to work together again. Gotcha. That's Brent Choi. He is the CEO and co-founder of Angry Butterfly, an agency in Toronto. And, uh, is it angrybutterfly.com? Uh, .com and .ca, I believe, both work. That's right. CA, I forgot. It's O Canada. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'll admit, I'm from the United States. I can do that. Uh, Lisa, uh, do we have a website people can check out at least uh, your store? We sure do. It's stoked.ca, and that's stoked without an E, S-T-O-K-D dot C-A. Fantastic. We'll have more of We Talk News after this.